<laughs> Welcome to Playful Preschool. I am Amanda Boy Arshanov, and I blog at the Educator's Spin on It. And here with me today, I have Natasha, and we are going to be sharing with you all about fall colors and activities that you can do with your preschoolers. I have an almost two year old, a four and a half year old, and an eight year old at home. But I've also taught kindergarten and first grade for many years. I have my reading masters in K-12 and my national board in early childhood education. So um, I've had a lot of experience working with young kids and they are both exciting and challenging. So I'm excited to be here tonight to share with you these activities. Natasha, can you tell us a little bit about your blog and how old your little ones are? Well, I'm Natasha. I blog at Tiny Tots Adventures. I have four girls. I have a 14-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 3, and a 1-year-old. Well, let me say, I guess she's 4. She's about to be 4 this month for Halloween. <laughs> so a 4-year-old and a 1-year-old. Um, I'm just a mom. I'm a mom who likes making sure that her children are very well educated and trying to break it down to the simplest form for them. That's about it. <laughs> And you share a lot of like some preschool activities, but you also have a little mix of kind of, I guess, mommy eye candy on your blog. Where yeah. you, <laughs> where you don't, <laughs> I mean, we talk about life because um, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a preschool teacher or a preschool parent or you have children coming in your homes. I think we're all, you know, we're all listening to this uh, video live broadcast because we want to make a difference with our children yeah. and um, so this week we uh, every Wednesday I should tell you that we share uh, playful preschool activities on our blogs and we try to cover math, science, social studies, reading, there's usually art, sensory movement, uh, pretty much everything you would want to see in a preschool curriculum and we make it available to everyone for free because we're, we want parents and teachers and caregivers to do that. And what's great is that um, it's kind of like a planning meeting if you worked in a school and you all got together and shared your best ideas. And I guess when we have a team of bloggers who are moms and teachers, we do the same thing and we share it live with you. Um, so we want to be a resource to save you time so that you can go and either tomorrow or next week go and do these activities that we're sharing with you. Um, so I don't have any of my fall books, but Natasha, I think, had one of the fall books that she was reading with her kids this week. We have Leaves, Leaves, Leaves by Nancy Elizabeth. It is a group book. It teaches about the, you know, as when fall comes, the weather starts to change and the leaves start to change colors. Well, it teaches the process of changing of the changing of the colors, the, how we lose the coral feel out the leaves. But it breaks it down for preschool form, which is what I like. <laughs> um, one of the bloggers shared an activity that deals with the carnations and and the the color changing of them. That is a perfect activity for this book. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, it's been. I've actually, I think I own that book somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's three bunnies. You don't even want to know how many books I own. It's, is it a little like rhyming text? That yes. Is a story? And that's, yes. it, I agree. The, if I remember correctly, the book is perfect for this three to five age category because they need that rhythm of literature. Right. And it's a simple form. Yeah, now I really am inspired to go find all my books I can't find. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I literally, just from teaching kindergarten, like I had so many books, so I started like all the books I would use in September, and so I put them in like bins, and then all my books I would use in October, and then I put them in bins, so like anything that was like a spider or pumpkins or Halloween, that went in this one, and my problem with fall colors. <laughs> Spread out between September and November. <laughs> because, you know, they kind of mix in. Um, so do you find that you rotate your books? Yeah. Do you go to the library a lot, or how do you find literature yeah. for your friends? Well, we do the library, of course. Free books are great. 
just grab them and return them. Um, we do garage sales, and lots of times the libraries have their sales towards the end of the summer where they're getting rid of a lot of books, and schools like to give away a lot of books. We do those. And when I lived in Chicago, Borders, we were big Borders fans, but there's no Borders out here, so. <laughs> but yeah, we do a lot of library school books. My mom just got their um, Friends of the Library sale, had like um, big grocery bags, and it was fill as much as you can for five bucks. I was like, that's great. Of course, I don't braid them because I have three. <laughs> and that just doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But she did it for me. <laughs> so I was like, yay, new It's trip. fun. But um, it's fun. I found out when I had my second kid that our library, if you go online and you type in your library code, you can put books on reserve. So yeah. what's really nice about it, um, my parents in Minnesota have it too, and when everything comes in, they stack them on shelves. For ours, they stack them like behind the desk, so I just give them my library card, and then they bring out this nice stack of like themed books for me, and I don't have to search for them, and it's it's wonderful because otherwise I would never be able to gather that many supplies quickly with children. No, you get stuck in the library. I get stuck in the library. <laughs> you get stuck looking after book after book. <laughs> uh, yes, and then my three kids are like, oh, I, I have a rule that if we get five books each and that's it at the library because we go every week and I figure that's a reasonable amount of everybody to be responsible for your own books. So if we stay too long then they find a lot of books and they're like, ooh, well now we have to make choices and then I just give them paper and pencil. I'm like, well write it for next time because you get five. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good tip to stop it. Well, you know, I love having readers, but I find I lose the library books, and then I have to pay fines, and then it's just not a good situation for anybody. Our newest thing, though, has been books on um on our devices, the apps, and those tend to be good. Um, we use a lot of them for this thing. We use a, quite a few books for the fall thing on apps because it helped with her and her um reading. It helped for her to read. It does like oh it reads it first, and then she goes behind, and she goes after them and read it. We love books on apps. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I totally forgot. I bought a whole bunch of fall books um, through Scholastic, and Scholastic has, I think, where it reads it out loud. Right. Is that kind of what your program is? Yeah, we do um, Farfaria. Or okay. It's like on. Uh, I don't know if they come on the iPhone, but I know it's on Android. Here's um, um, through Scholastic. It's like through the schools. Um, you can set up like a library bookshelf for each kid. Oh. So for those of us with multiple siblings, um, and now of course I can't go back, but for those <laughs> of us with multiple siblings, like I can put my chapter books for my daughter, and then I can put the preschool books. And um, like not all of them, but some of them have that read read to you feature. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I love the read to you feature. Those are yeah. nice. They're, it's highly motivational. And the voices. I love the voices. <laughs> yeah, it's. I was talking with somebody about it. Like for me, I want to make sure that they have that snuggle lap time actual book. Right. And then. The next best is the books on and the books on tape are um, like great because they can actually sit with them in front of them and so they can read and listen at the same time. Right. And then there, the next one is we have the what's it called like some leap pad and. I think that's a brand. I think they call called Elite Pads. Yeah, where they have like that interactive books where you can use your pen and it touches the words. Yeah, those are Elite Pads. Elite Frog, yeah. Elite Pads. So at least that way they're like, they're getting that immediate feedback where they touch the word and it reads out loud. And I think those are really great. I used them a lot in the classroom because we used to have 26 five-year-olds. And so when everybody's <laughs> learning to read and they're 
26 different levels, they need that more immediate feedback than just one person can humanly do. So we used a lot of those interactive storybooks. And then now they come out with the, the e-books that like read to you. So I'm like, there's this whole wonderful spectrum of books and ways that we can get our kids excited about literature. So I am so glad you brought that up because... Um, yeah, yeah, and it, I like the engagement that it involves now. Yeah, and it just adds a little extra technology and parents are always asking us how do you incorporate technology into your lives with as a tool, not as a babysitter. And I think that interactive books are, are a great way for that. Okay. So speaking of books, um, they are. They're nice. we made um, a flip book. Or, yeah, they call them flip books. Have you ever made one of these, Natasha? No, we haven't. They're so... I like that. It's super easy. Um, you literally take two pieces of paper and then you make sure that they overlap and then you fold them down. Okay. So that they... Oh, I can make that. Huh? I said I can make that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know when you make 26 of them, like five times a week? <laughs> oh. You get really good at what's easy to do. <laughs> um, but um, I actually wrote this, I wrote fall colors, and I wrote it in yellow, and then I traced it in red, and then my preschooler goes, but mom, you used all the fall colors and didn't leave any for me to trace. And I went, but I was having fun. <laughs> so he went over it in blue. Because he said that the blue and the orange will make brown. And I'm like, oh, hey, that's pretty smart. And you just literally flip it up. And then I, like this was blank, so I wrote red leaf. And then we talked about maple trees. And I, like, put a picture of a maple tree. And this is what, or maple leaf. And so my four-and-a-half-year-old drew his maple leaf picture. And we talked about the word um, jagged. Okay. Because you know how that side is jagged? And then with my daughter, who's eight, um, this is her maple leaf. Oh, she has a nice little maple leaf. <laughs> Four years old? Eight years old. And um, I should show you my one-year-olds, which is nothing like nothing. this. Because, <laughs> you know, he wants to do school, too. Uh, but with her, we talked about chlorophyll and we talked about photosynthesis, and we talked about the actual leaf, and of course, you know, she's at a different learning level. Um, and so we did that with each leaf. And it was kind of fun, because when he was done... Sorry, I got a little person. <laughs> you're fine. We all got little people. And so she, he sat and he read the words back to me, and... Of course, I would read it first to him, so I'd say, like, red leaf. Okay, now it's your turn, and he would read red leaf. Hi. After a couple times, hi, sweetie. After a couple times, he would read it independently. And then when his dad came home, he's like, i got to read you my new book. <laughs> <laughs> now, you had some craft activities that I wanted to do with mine. We did... Leaf people. We did fall leaf people. Our leaves are brown. They didn't come out all pretty. <laughs> we, we didn't find any pretty leaves. We found all the brown ones, but that's okay. But we did the leaf people after we decided, after we read a couple of books, and I forgot which book it was. It's on, the, it's on our app, too. <laughs> but the, the little leaves walk around, basically, and so we decided to make leaf people after it. This was our experience with glue. <laughs> okay. The glue. Um, hey, glue. <laughs> yeah. Practice. I'm I'm learning about the process of glue and the, the the spills. We had to try maybe I think three of them before we got a paper with that was just not filled with glue. <laughs> but yeah, we did leave people. Um I think it must be the age. Yeah. And the, the control, she can't really control it. <laughs> yeah, the, the like squeezing and then the glue piling. Piles up. Yeah. 
But I found that the fifth one, what I did was I took a sponge and I put it in the container and I threw the glue in there and let her dab the leaf. I got tired. So much of a mess. Everything was getting glued. Well, and you know, that's a really great fine motor. Nice thinking on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I bet like a paintbrush too might work. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That would have that would have been nice. No. Well, I, I that actually was like, like the, Okay. That'll be less of a pain less of a mess. <laughs> yeah, because you could just start away. Right. And I was only thinking of that because those are um we made a fall sensory bin and somehow those ended up in there. <laughs> Odd things end up in fall in bin in the sensory bins. Odd yeah. things. But my sensory bin is full of like Rose petals and flowers they picked, <laughs> and then they wanted Q-tips. <laughs> I don't know where they get those from. <laughs> Roll with it. You just gotta go with right, whatever. You have to go with the <laughs> That's so cute. And you shared with us on your blog um, a number activity. We did the number leaves. I made word number words. I'm introducing those to her because. Last time I shared the number activity with you guys, she was struggling with a few numbers, the, the actual number, but we worked on them, and I figured after so long, this was actually good. It was time for us to move on, because either way it goes, she was going to have to move on. <laughs> and I, I wrote them down, because so, she's really, once you say it to her, and you show it to her, she's going to remember it. And I, I figured if I keep them like this for a while, she'll remember it. But I like the fact that even though it's simple, when she, when I feel like she's more confident in knowing them, just cut them up and make them into a puzzle, and make them put it together, so she'll know that one is one, two is two. Oh, oh, you mean so you have these leaf cutouts, and they have the right. word one, and they have the number one, and so right. you leave the number one whole, right? And then you would cut the leaf the that has the number two into two, right? And make her put it together as a puzzle. Oh, that's a great idea. It keeps the saying, I, I don't have to lose any material. Yes. <laughs> and, and you were showing me all these cute little leaves, and I was thinking, oh, I think I have one of those, um, almost like a circle bracket, that I bet mm -hmm. if you put a, punched a hole in, you can make a little flip book. That would be nice, too. So maybe in between. I like the idea. <laughs> yeah, so now... <laughs> Now do your gems. So they, if there's a number two on the leaf, they would put two gems. Right. And if you're sick of that one, punch the holes and make the flip book. And then cut them apart. <laughs> and then cut them apart. Or even <laughs> or cut them apart. Are they foam? Yeah, they're foam. They're I wonder they could with the kid scissors. Well, she works with what? The... They cut. They cut. We, tried, we cut some foam. We cut out some foam hearts. So they there cut. Go. There you go. You're like maximizing the learning potential because then you have that, that fine motor because cutting is so hard for preschool, most yeah. of that. Um, it, took a, it took a mighty long time to get her to, to hold, hold the scissors correctly. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine still, I mean, like, mine loves to cut, but he's still not holding it in the most... Um, Successful way all the time. You know how they have to hold the paper and right. the scissors. So yeah. sometimes he just takes his scissors and he's like, whoa! And I'm like, you know, you could turn your paper, and it might be easier. <laughs> but he hasn't quite got that either. So I love it. That way you're practicing math. You have a little literacy. You got some fine motor, and then you have some problem solving and spatial reasoning by putting all awesome. from. All from some little foam <laughs> leaf cutouts. For a dollar, right? Yes, for a dollar. You get ten for a dollar. <laughs> there you go. So if you're listening and you want great learning ideas with maximum potential for a dollar. For a dollar. There you go. You need to you need to start the dollar, the dollar learning game. I think it's I, I have to try that now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, Natasha, that every week you come up with these great ideas. Um, Thank you. So I Natasha, love your video. Huh? Oh. I Natasha love your videos. Watson. I don't have to hunt down videos because you find all the great ones. <laughs> you know, I thank you. 
I am. Um, I have been inspired by some of our preschool coworkers. Um, if you go on their website, it's someone every week has these amazing um, sensory bins. And a sensory bin, like you find them if you're going on Pinterest, and um, most of the bloggers I know will share some of them. And I, as a parent, know that sensory bins are good because it gives kids a chance to explore uh, different materials with their hands and kind of more of an open-ended play. I hate sensory bins. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not a clean freak. I, I like a tidy house, but like I like a lived-in house, so it's not that. Um, if you follow my Instagram feed, you will know that my children are all very dirty. Um, they're covered in paint. They're covered in dirt. Um, we're outside people. Um, but there's something about sensory bins that just, I don't know, it's the mess. <laughs> I think maybe it's just because I have dumpers, meaning like, I'll feel like a beautiful sensory bin and like my children just want to dump it. So I'm trying to counteract my parenting dislike of sensory bins and I'm trying to do one a week. <laughs> you know? I'm trying. Um, we can't all be good at everything. So um, how I'm combating that, my um, tipping over problem, is I'm setting out like a big sheet. And so that way when I bring a sensory bin out, I'm putting it on the sheet. And that way when they tip everything out and have their full body sensory experience, <laughs> then I can just fold the sheet back up and dump it into the container. I use a, um, a twister mat. I use an old twister mat because they did start off as big dumpers. Yeah. Mine are I mean, still I have a photo on Instagram where I'm picking up Easter grass because I left for a second and they dumped it all over. <laughs> but don't you think part of it, like I know for my one-year-old, like he's not a preschooler, he's a toddler. So for him, like his brain needs that. What happens when I dump this over? I am not a, pre I'm not a toddler. I know what happens. <laughs> they know so, what happens too. Mommy right. says, why did you do that? <laughs> well, they know I don't mind mess. So it's just more like, okay, boys, let's clean up again for the 80th time today. Uh, so my combat of that this week, because we're doing fall colors, is, of course, we went on a walk, and I'm in the south. So we really don't have a lot of fall colors yet. I went to all of our preschool team's posts, and I was thinking, okay, well, I'm going to paint, and I'm going to I want to do there's a that watercolor mixing activity. That looks fun. Um, I I totally want to do that, and then uh, I think it's Capri plus three made her own potpourri. I know, and I was like. Um, I just planted rose bushes and they're gorgeous. So I told the boys, I said, find anything that's fall colors. Of course, we can only find pinks and purples and Q-tips. Um, so now I need to figure out, I think she dried them in her oven? I think so. Like on a low temp. So I let the boys, we have some rosemary in our um, sensory bin. Do you think rosemary will dry well or will it get flaky? It dries well. Don't forget to get your oranges. <gasps> oh, oranges and roses would be nice. You have to get the oranges. And then I have mums. You think those will dry well? Hmm. Can't hurt to try. I think, oh, no. We'll find out. <laughs> so I, I put them in a big bin and you they have just to post them after on Instagram. Right. Well, they literally sat and played 
in, in rose petals and rosemary all morning, so they're not exactly in the best shape, rose petals. Thank you. But I think if I bake them at just a low temperature, it might dry them out. I'll have to get some oranges, though. Would you do orange and cinnamon with rose petals? I don't know if I put the cinnamon in with the rose petals. I would yeah, do the so, orange with that. So I was like, yay, I can combine two of my things. I'm going to do my sensory bed with the kids. Combine it with a little walk outside looking for colors and talking about different words. Uh, and like we used magenta, um, the, you know, great fall color. Because I'm like, let's find red. Oh, wait, there's no red. <laughs> <laughs> How about pinks and magentas, guys? Uh, so I think part of working with preschoolers and it's just being adaptable. It doesn't always have to go like somebody else's. Like those people in Canada. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Canada has these gorgeous pictures of like orange and red trees, and I'm like, oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah. They are beautiful. <laughs> when you can't see them right now. <laughs> I know. So we did our sensory, our outdoor walk, looking for colors, and then I'm going to use all of that and make a potpourri. Because like your little leaves, it's kind of nice when you are uh, homeschooling your own kid or you have a smaller group of kids that uh, you can use a lot of the same resources over and over and over again in multiple different ways and like you yeah. don't have to be making stuff new. So that was my goal for the week. I, was proud. I think you did pretty good. I just don't put don't the q-tips in the oven. Hi? Don't put the q-tips in the oven. <laughs> no, you know, as we were doing this, I just, I just took them out. Well, they actually, these are in my craft box, and they have total access to the crafts. So they craft, like, independently on their own. Um, what is it called? Open-ended art? Uh, I so, just have an open room. Huh? I have an open room. This whole entire room is open. Whatever's in here, you grab it. <laughs> yeah, so, like... Sometimes I do like these kind of activities mm. where I'm like teacher directing and I know um, somebody had asked this week uh, how many activities do you do uh, and what's reasonable uh, and I thought that was a really great question actually. Um, Let's see how many activities did I do this week? Oh wow I did quite a few but they're so they're I guess because most of my activities are playing, they, she never really realizes that they're activities and that she's learning, and they they do double duties a lot of times. So I can't really say what's a what's a good balance. I stop when she says stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that's a really good like chi what's it called child led. So yeah. But I think at the same time, like we need time to take parent breaks. I need my coffee in the morning by myself for two minutes. <laughs> so like it's hard to find a balance of being able to get stuff done and making sure you have time for homeschooling. So in all honesty I try to make like one interactive book a week with my son. Um, I try to make sure I have at least one day where we're focusing on writing. Like I don't consider this uh, focusing on writing because of the way I taught it. I think I lost you. Oh. I said okay. I Oh, I'm back. Uh, I said I don't consider this activity a writing activity because I was working on teaching him the color words. Um, and I was asking him to draw in a specific way. So it's more teaching him how to draw and vocabulary and like basic reading. Whereas um, a writing activity, I might ask him to write or draw a picture and then have him tell me the words for that picture. Um, 
And what I do is I just, at the very, like if this is my paper, I'll just at the very bottom and I'll say, you tell me about the story and I write down at the very bottom anything he tells me. So it doesn't have to be full sentences. It doesn't have to be correct grammar. If he says that's what his story is about, that's what I write. And then I date it and I file it in a folder. And so I try to make sure there's one literacy. I try to make sure there's one writing. Um, and I try to make sure that at least two days I'm really focusing on building toys. Uh, so like this morning we did Legos and we used orange, yellow, and red. I had him sort it and he was just building patterns. Um, so I try to, I guess, hit some of the major, oh, and then like a math day, um, where I'll focus on that activity predominantly for that morning. And then if it comes up three or four times during the week, that's great. I don't know. How do you do that? Well, since I do, I do kind of feed off of how she feels, I do. We, we do try to do at least one literacy activity for the week, one math activity. Sometimes we, we get a little more math, depending on how it goes. Cause she, I think she enjoys math, so we, we do spend a little more time there. For writing, I don't do more of the um, – I'm not looking for her to write letters. But we have done her pictures. Everything is – everything means something. These are her little pumpkin people. I was going to say, those are so cute. <laughs> we, we talk about, we discuss, we discuss an activity or something, or a book in some cases, and she, her job is to give me the story. Give me the story back. And this is kind of, it, it helps a little bit. She's learned how to, she can write, though. <laughs> Let me take that back. She can write. <laughs> uh, well, we don't focus on it. Mine doesn't. <laughs> Uh, I did tell him the other day, I said, listen, don't, like, because I said, will you write something? He's like, I don't know how to write. And I said, okay, listen, fake it. Just fake oh, it. Just fake it. And he goes, what do you mean, Mom? I said, okay, listen, you know words go up and down or letters go up and down. So I said, just start, like, writing and stop and pretend it's a word. <laughs> so, he does a lot of that with her sisters. Yeah, it was they, play a little, they play a lot of teacher in school and, and teachers, you have to do a lot of writing. <laughs> well, and that's pre-writing. And I think sometimes we want it to come out like grown-up writing, and it doesn't. So I'm like, just fake it. So he laughs at me. And anytime he starts to write, he's like, he just does this. <laughs> and I'm like, well, do you want to kind of think about what the beginning sound might be? And he's like, yeah, later, Mom. I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's going to give me a run for my money. They're good at that. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else we did. Um, we're still halfway through the week, so I'm going to um, – I was really inspired by everyone's article today. So I, I, I wrote down on my calendar the things I want to try, like the color mixing, um, painting your feet, and making a big collage. Yeah. Um, even uh, outside, somebody made their own like outdoor spray paint with, I don't know if it was like a cornstarch paint, and they, they made this giant fall tree, and they let their kid... Um, yes, yeah, the cornstarch spray. Yeah, with the um, spray bottles like that. Oh my goodness, <laughs> especially with the, I don't know why the boys have like really weak handwriting muscles mm -hmm. um, but that that motion and that squeezing has got to be good for them so I'm like I want to do all this I don't have time <laughs> and that's I think the thing is we don't have time none of us do have time but we make time because you have to yeah you have to you make and I think that's why it's called play, Playful Preschool. It makes it right. fun. <laughs> Make it in after breakfast. If you're getting home after a long day of work, um, 
quick pop something in the microwave and snuggle with your kid on the couch to read a book. Um, have them help you even with dishes so that afterwards you have a couple minutes before they're going to bed. Um, weekends are also a good time uh, for busy families. If uh, you have another caregiver in the house and multiple kids, then maybe you can kind of sneak away and have a little preschool time. Um, I know my kids really like that on the weekend. Um, we try to do some like fun experiments. This weekend we have a goop, jack, slime planned. And I literally told them I can't handle it until the weekend. <laughs> so they have it like all sitting materials on the counter and they're like, please, I'm like, weekend. I can do with it on the weekend. Because at least there's another person that I can say, okay, you guys, somebody take the toddler, I'll take the four-year-old, and then the eight-year-old can help independently. So um, we don't try to limit learning and fun like science experiences to just the weekdays. Um, sometimes it's easier to take advantage of the weekends. Yeah, when you're I got two that's in school, so I like the weekends. They're home, and they, they have just as much fun as the little ones do. And they're the big help. <laughs> they uh, are a big help. Yeah, I was just going to say, you have two older ones. You're going to be like, okay, you get this one, and you get this one, and I'm going to drink my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not how it happens. <laughs> no. It but, happens like, oh, Mommy, you got something set up. Well, what about us? <laughs> um. That exactly. <laughs> I sat down with my preschooler and my my eight year old's like, oh, but we could talk about this, and I'm like, yes, we could. Okay, let's go. And then of course the toddler's like, me too, me too, and I'm like, yes, right. me too. But the um, good thing about that interaction is they, the little ones normally pick up from the big ones, and it just it just it makes it a lot easier on you. <laughs> but and too when our older kids help explain concepts, it, they internalize it and they're able to solidify it because it's a higher order level of thinking, explaining it and teaching it to somebody. And not the parent or the teacher. <laughs> yes. 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 Totally. Well, um, do you have any fun activities that you're going to do with your kids tomorrow? Tomorrow is Thursday? No. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. So, all of you listening and watching, what I encourage you to do is I'm going to put the links uh, to our blogs right below here. And I encourage you to come stop by, not just today, but really any day of the week because when we share articles, they're stored uh, on our blogs forever. And so you can get the latest up-to-date activities that we do with our children. Uh, for example, Playful Preschool will be on Wednesday. Uh, so if you need some new inspiring ideas and you're like us and don't know what you're going to do tomorrow, <laughs> hop on. <laughs> because the activities are free. Um, we want to be a resource to you, as I said before. And we've tried them all with our kids. Um, Choose the ones that you have the materials for and that you think are the most age appropriate for your kids. And they're um, adaptable. A lot of these activities are adaptable. Any age. And what's great I have adapted some of these activities for my 14 year old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we try to try to do it with just materials that you can use from around the home. Because we're all on budgets and uh, we realize that learning doesn't need to be expensive. Just needs to be hands on. Yeah. So, thank you so much for joining us, Natasha, and all of our viewers. I hope you have a great learning week and we'll see you next week. See you guys later.